So today we're going to look at East Natuna in Indonesia. This is Asia's largest undeveloped gas accumulation. Now, is there a bigger one elsewhere in the world? If you do know of one, please add it to the comments below. Maybe we'll follow up with a video on that. So here's a map of Southeast Asia and to locate where we're going to be looking today, this is the region here. And in a little bit more detail, the East Natuna Sea is this region here. It's to the east of the Natuna Arch and this is Natuna Island. So on this map, we can see the license here for the East Natuna field. And we also see a number of other features. That is the maritime boundary between Indonesia and Malaysia here. It wraps all the way up across to here, where it's the boundary between Indonesia and Vietnam. And then across here and back into Indonesia and Malaysia. Other features on this map. You can see the China's Nine Dash Line, as it's known, has been known since 2009, which is the maritime claim that China has lodged. It's uh, recently become a Ten Dash Line, so uh, that's been modified in 2023. But the region we're looking at, it's about 200 kilometers northeast of the Natuna Island. Now, the East Natuna Sea Block, it was formerly known as the D-Alpha Block gas field. We actually see some of this nomenclature kind of come back in recently. It was discovered by E&I back in 1973 in a water depth of 145 metres. Now, the gas in place is estimated to be 222 trillion cubic feet, with some 40 to 46 trillion cubic feet commercially recoverable. Now, we'll come on for why that is such a, a low recovery factor in a minute, but it accounts for about one quarter of Indonesia's total gas reserves of some 182 trillion cubic feet. And if the field is put on production, it should produce gas for over 30 years. Taking a quick look at the regional stratigraphy, we can see here the West Natuna Basin and the East Natuna Basin, separated by the Natuna Arch. Now, in the East Natuna Basin, we can see that it's all late tertiary, so Oligocene, Miocene to, uh, to very, very recent sediments. And within the area, we have down here the Gabus and the Orang. These units are potentially where the source rocks are. Now, it all sits on a, an unconformity, and the basement consists of Jurassic Cretaceous metamorphics with some granite intrusions which are dated as being Cretaceous in age. Now where the play is in the East Natuna field is actually here in the Terumbu reefs, so this reef system. And here is a seismic line, it's uh, from PGS and we can see it's a west-east line and it really clearly shows this major reefal build up here in the late Miocene. So here is the reef. We see these fantastic onlaps here on the sort of talus slope here. It's clearly defined on seismic and we can uh, actually pick out the basement high here, which is probably the reason why this high has developed and this reef has developed on top of the high. Now, just a, a few features of the field. Well, it is a combined stratigraphic and structural trap. And like most carbonate reservoirs, they are quite complex. The lithologies and the sort of porosities that are, are there. It's mid to late Miocene age Chirumbu formation. The crest is shown here at around about uh, 2,600 metres. The column height is a very, very impressive 1,640 metres. And reservoir thickness, well, it ranges from 300 to 1,500 metres. Here's a geoseismic section, and it shows the pre-Gabas. This is thought to be the kitchen area, the source rock kitchen within the Gabas, within the Orang Formation. And you can see there's an indication of where the top of the oil window is and the top of the gas window. So a lot of the Gabas Formation is now well into the gas window. The Orang would still be uh, in the oil window within this zone here. Now here are these Miocene carbonates and indeed this is the Natuna, the L structure, the uh, Natuna gas field. Now we wondered and questioned why this uh, Bursa oil discovery had not found uh, any hydrocarbons in it. Now we don't really understand that as yet, we haven't studied the area in any great detail, we don't have time for that, we're racing around the world looking everywhere. But we understand that the Bursa oil discovery was actually a minor discovery down here in these sands in the, the Gabas formation. 
So perhaps there really isn't a migration pathway through this predominantly uh, muddy sequence here, and it's only locally where you've actually charged these reefs like uh, the East Natuna via faults from underneath. Now, over the years, there have been uh, a lot of development studies, but draw your attention to this, this number up here. So we talked about there being a huge 222 trillion cubic feet of gas in place, but 71% of it is carbon dioxide. So that's no good. That's no use. It has to be separated out. And hence, the recovery for gas is thought to be of the order of 40 to 46 trillion cubic feet. Now, that's still a huge number. And in the past, and we'll go on to look at the companies that were involved, but in the past, various schemes were thought of. If uh, it could be pipelined here up to the northwest, could actually be piped over towards Singapore, could be taken by pipeline all the way down to Jakarta or across here into Pintulu. Also, an offshore LNG was also considered and various other options. None of these development options actually got past the desktop phase. One of the development concepts that was considered was a gas-to-liquid system, a GTL. So what is gas-to-liquids? Well, it's a refinery process where you convert methane and the sort of lighter hydrocarbon gases and turn them into longer-chain hydrocarbons so that you get up into the gasoline, diesel fuel type range. Now, separating out the carbon dioxide from the methane, not easy. So if you start here at around about 72 mole percent of carbon dioxide, the first stage is a sort of cryogenic separation. Then you've actually got this conversion here. Once it gets down to sort of 40 percent carbon dioxide and methane, and then you start the, the gas to liquids process. The next stage is separating out the carbon dioxide down to uh, 10%. Now, obviously, with so much carbon dioxide, any development would have to be looking at a simultaneous gas reinjection, so a carbon storage, carbon capture and storage. Companies that have been involved in the license over the years, well, I think these are the companies they've kind of changed out over the years, but ExxonMobil have been involved a lot for quite a lot of the history of this. E and I discovered it and were around for a long time, but uh, they aren't in it as, as of late. But none of these schemes has made it off the drawing board. But in 2023, we have the second phase of the licensing round, and this has been launched by the Ministry of Energy and Mineral Resources, or ESDM, and they have got three blocks on offer, one of which is the Natuna D-Alpha, and you can see that terminology is coming back in. It was kind of dropped for a decade or two, but it seems to be coming back in. Now, the area is huge. It's uh, over 10,000 square kilometers, and looking at a five-year commitment now, there are studies to be done, and also they're looking for one firm well to be committed for the, during this licensing period. Now, bid round submissions by uh, the 24th of November, 2023. So what can we say about Nituna? Well, we wonder, who will be able to move this massive resource forward? There have been some huge companies and corporations involved in the past. They haven't made it work. How will it change? What will happen in the future? Indonesia is very keen to see East Nituna developed. It would certainly solve any gas supply issues for decades. But there's also the issue of China's maritime boundary claims. As stated, it would require an enormous simultaneous carbon capture and storage project. Can you uh, produce a mixed gas at one end of the field and inject pure carbon dioxide back at the other end? Maybe you can. I hear maybe looking to do a pilot on that at Morecambe in the Irish Sea. Anyway, if you've got a spare $40 billion, this might be a project you wish to consider. Thank you for watching. I hope you found that interesting. Please hit the like, subscribe, and ring the bell. Hope to see you back on our channel before too long. Bye for now.